Okay. Yay. Yay. I, I tout the prophetic ministry. That ought to make every one of y'all want to run back there when we have prophetic ministry. I also, as we talked about praying the promises of God, um, for those of you that are fairly new, this, the past nine months we have been steeping in the promises of God. And as I said last week, we could do it for another year. I mean, I feel like we're scratching the surface of the promises of God. There's so many, hundreds if not thousands of promises in the Word. So we've been steeping in the promises. And we talked about the power of praying the promises. And one thing that, uh, or two things that I talked about particularly with that is that James said in the book of James, he said, you have not because you ask not. So let's ask. And the author of Hebrews said in Hebrews 4, Come boldly to the throne of grace. Come boldly that you might obtain grace and mercy in your time of need. So come boldly. So um, this next gal, Angela Church, grabbed hold of that. Um, just that little aside that we had chatted about when we were talking about praying the promises, the power of coming boldly and not missing an opportunity to ask God for your heart's desire. And uh, she did that and has an amazing testimony. So I want you to see this. Hi, my name is Angela Church, and I've attended Renolda Church for, um, since February 2018. I've moved here um, from Atlanta. I'd been in Atlanta about 20 years. I decided to join the church in July of 2018. Um, I came back to North Carolina to be present for my first grandchild's birth, and then my stepdad had passed away in November of 2017, so I wanted to be close to my mom. And I have been unemployed since July of 2017. I decided to join the women's group Awakenings in the fall of 2018, and that was a great decision. Um, the group was so very welcoming, and the smallish group I joined that we affectionately call the Circle of Love consists of a fabulous group of women with huge hearts and a faithful prayer life, so they embraced me with open arms. The church in this group began praying for the right job to enter my life. Anne spoke one day about how to pray, and this lesson changed my prayer life. She said we should pray boldly to God about our desires, our needs, and our request of Him. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive His mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. That's Hebrews 4.16. My small group that day talked about how we all felt uncomfortable praying aloud. And so we decided that we were going to start praying the promises of God. And I was starting to feel a little sad and a little hopeless, a little broken in my whole employment journey. So I prayed like I never had before in my life. Trying, you know, asking God to please provide, to please live up to his promises. And for some reason, I got really loud and these words just fell out of my mouth. God put a job in my lap. Just put it in my lap. I kept saying it, put it in my lap, put it right here in my lap. And I was like really saying this pretty loud. I was kind of screaming at him if I'm honest. The next day, 30 hours exactly to the time of this prayer, I received a text from a former boss telling me something interesting had come up job-wise and asking me if I had time to talk to him. Of course, I said yes, but I thought I knew what he was talking about. See, there was a job that I knew about at his company that I had just spoken to somebody about, but it, in my spirit, it did not feel right. It did not feel like the job for me. And I kind of thought this was going to be like the one-two punch. You know, I kind of talked to one, and now he was going to come in and try to seal the deal. So anyway, he called me, and I immediately told him, hey, I just spoke with, you know, your employee, and I know, and he's like, Angela, no. He said, she knows nothing about this. So I decided to stop talking and listen. One of his VPs had come into his office that afternoon, that very afternoon, talking about how she was not happy with her job. And it just wasn't a good fit. And she had decided that she needed to move on. So she was coming in to tell John, you know, hey, you know, this is kind of my decision, but 
I know I'm doing this huge data migration project for you and I don't want to leave you in a lurch, so I'll work through August and in the meantime, I'll be happy to train my successor. So he immediately picked up the phone and he called me. I was in total disbelief. We talked about a few details and he said, you know, I want you to think about it and let's talk by the end of the week. So I said yes. And of course, I, in, I hung up and immediately started crying and praising God and, and for whatever reason saying, is this really the one? How could I have, how could I have even doubted it? But I, I still, I couldn't believe it. I, you know, I asked him, is this the one? There was one caveat to this, however. The job was in Atlanta and I had really wanted to stay in Winston. So I talked to my son and daughter-in-law about this opportunity and they gave me their blessing and said they just wanted me to be happy. They knew how much I enjoyed working and how important a career was to me. You know, I just started talking to my closest friends about this and discussing it and everybody was truly just blown away with my story. In the meantime, my mother had met with a surgeon to discuss her cataract surgery. So I came home one day and let me just say this, my mom did not know about this opportunity. I had not shared this with her because it still wasn't truly real to me until I received that offer letter. And she told me that her surgery was going to be on Monday, um, April 22nd, and asked if I could be available to help her. And of course, I said yes. But I kind of had a little sick feeling in my stomach because we had talked about a potential start date of April 23rd. And I received a text from John. And the text said, what would your ideal start date be? Monday, April 22nd, or Monday, April 29th? Well, I screamed. And I'm like, Kathy, you are not going to believe this. And I told her, and we just started praising God at this moment. And, I, and my exact words is, God is showing out, girl. God is showing out. And she said, no, he is showing up. So we were just saying, God is showing out, and he's showing up. Hallelujah. I mean, it was just, again, it was, it was in disbelief. So I texted him back and I said, hey, John, if it's okay with you, the 29th would really be a better date for me. And I explained my mom's surgery. And his response back to me was, of course, family first. So a day later, John called with the offer and it was well worth the wait. The job was mine. It was just mine. I can't thank God enough for his faithfulness, for his goodness, for his mercies, for his provision, for his blessing. He, I, he heard me and he provided. Then Ann texted me and wanted to know if I would shoot this video. Well, at the time, I couldn't imagine talking to anybody from a mountaintop and what could my good news possibly be? This video is my mountaintop and I am blessed to share my story with you. I'm sad to leave my family, my friends. The Awakenings women, and especially the circle of love in this wonderful church. But I know without a shadow of a doubt that I'm doing the right thing and that God has a work for me. He has a plan for me. It's goodbye for now because I do know that this is just a season and I will be back.